Have you ever thought of creating a quiz application that could bring out the competitive spirit of players with real-time play mechanisms? And in addition, having endless questions thanks to the help of generative AI? I'm Muammer Zalik Güler. I work as a senior developer advocate at AWS. And if your answer is yes, or you consider to learn something new, today I will take you through the steps on how you can build this application with React Native, Amplify Gentoo, and Amazon Bedrock. If you're ready, let's get started. First step is to create a React Native application. For this, we will be using Expo. Expo is a framework for React Native applications. It helps us to build and create these applications easily. For creating the application, we will be using Expo CLI. It has a command called create Expo app. You can pass in the name of your application and the template out of anything that you want. In this case, we will be using an empty application with TypeScript support. Once we run the command, it will install the dependencies that we need for our application. Once the app creation is done, you will see a success message in your terminal. Now it is time to initialize the Amplify project. For that, you need to go to the root folder of your application. At the root folder of your application, run the npm create amplify command. This will install the necessary dependencies and create two new subfolders under an amplify folder. These two subfolders will be auth for authentication resources and data for your data resources. Once the setup process is done for Amplify, now you can open your project in your IDE. In your IDE, you will see the new folder that I have mentioned before. And if you open them up, for authentication, you will see that you have an email authentication method already implemented. And for data, you have a simple to-do element that you can use for a to-do application. The backend.ts file holds all the information that we need to create our backend as well. If you go back to your resource.ts file under the auth folder, you will see a define auth function that is used. This function is really important. It will keep the information and details about your authentication flow. For a simple authentication flow, this should be enough. However, we want to change things a bit. We need more than email right now, and we will add it here. If you update the resource.ts file for the auth folder, you will see some changes. First change that we have right now is the verification email. If you have used the previous approach, you will still get the email, but with a default message. The previous one was working fine as well. It was using the default messages. However, with these changes, now you have a customized email that you can send it to the users. Second change in the file is about the usernames. We didn't have the username property before. Our email was our only identity. However, we want to keep the usernames for the players. And for this, we have created an attribute called preferred username and make it mutable and required so during the sign up process, we will ask for it. Now we have enough for our authentication flow. First, we will create our sandbox environment. npx ampx sandbox command will create a per user sandbox environment that is deploying the resources to the cloud. This way, you would iterate through your changes past and you wouldn't be afraid of breaking something on the production environments. Let's run the command and see how it is deploying. Once the deployment is done, you will see the total time that it took, and you will see that it will actually listen to the changes in your files. So anytime that you make a change in the resources, you will see the reflection in the cloud directly. Now it is time to work on the front-end side of things. First, we will start by adding some libraries. These libraries are called Amplify UI components. These components are highly themable and also accessible components that you can use in your front-end applications. For complicated tasks, we are giving the users a chance to implement those easier. With a single line of code, you will be able to create an authentication flow. You don't believe me? Let's see it in action. First, I'm going to install these libraries. Once you add these libraries to your project, they are ready to use. Once the libraries are added, the next thing is to use them in our application. Open your app.tsx file and update like the following. Once you update it, let's go through the code and see what we are doing here. If we check out our app component, you can see that we have wrapped everything with authenticator provider and authenticator components. Authenticator provider will control the information about the authentication an authenticator will provide us information and UI for authentication flow. You can also see that we have some helper functions that we can use to patch information such as username. 
And also through the hooks like Use Authenticator, you can have helper functions for your authentication forms, such as sign out, and provide them into the custom buttons that you can create. Now, let's see the authentication flow in action. One of the advantages of React Native is you can run your projects on iOS and Android. If you want to run your project on iOS, you have to have a Mac device. For Android, you can have the Android toolchain on all the platforms. For Android, you can use the emulators that they provide. For iOS, you can use the simulators as well. Or for both platforms, you can use the real devices. In this tutorial, we will start with iOS simulator. For running the application on iOS and Android, we need to do a pre-bundle operation. This will add a package name to your application, and in addition, it will create some folders that you need to run Android or iOS applications. First, we will run the npx expo pre-build. This will create an Android package and iOS bundle identifier. These two are really important for your application, so in case you want to go to the market, be sure that you keep them unique. Once it is done, we will do the second step. Running the npx pod install is important for iOS applications. It will install the necessary libraries on iOS binary level. If you want to run your iOS application, you have to run npx export run iOS command. This will compile all the necessary files for you, create a bundle, and install it to your simulator. The initial installation may take some time. Don't worry about that. Once it is done, you can iterate through your code faster. Once the compilation is successful, your application will be shown on the simulator. If you see any errors or warnings, you can ignore it for now. They are not blockers for you. If you're ready, let's take a look at the login screen. In the first page, it has the email and the password like we expect it to be. If we click on the Create Account button, it will take us to the Create Account page. And the page has email, password, and username like we defined it to be. Once you fill in all the information that we need, you can continue to create your account. Now you will receive a confirmation email for confirming your account. When you check your email, you can see that it has the same subject and the body that we define in our resource.ts file. Once you confirm the user, it will take you to the home page and you will see a welcome message for the username. And if you click on the sign out button, you can see that it will take you back to the sign in page automatically. Now that the authentication flow is ready, let's work on the gaming logic now. For the gaming logic, we will delete everything in the resource.ts file under the data folder and update it like the following. Once you save the file, if you open up your sandbox, you will see that there is a change has been already triggered. The trigger will go through your data and see what kind of changes you made. If you remove the data type, it will be removed from all the resources. And if you added something new, it will be added as well. Meanwhile, the sandbox environment is deploying Let's check out what we did in our resource.ts file. We have created a new game object. The game object has two fields for player one and player two, and it has properties for questions to be asked for to the bot user. We have the score and the current question to keep track of everything. Also, you can see that besides doing models, you can also create custom types. These custom types can be referenced in other objects as well. This will be helpful for us to clean up our project. In addition to cleanup, it will also make it easier for other developers to understand what's going on. For creating models or custom types, you can use the primitive types to define their properties. You can also define if they are arrays or if they are required or anything at all. Once the deployment is done, now we can work on the front end part again. We will update the home screen code a bit to make it more look like there is a game happening. With the updates to the home screen, now we have a basic gaming logic to search and match for the games. But how did we do that? Let's take a look. When a player search for a game, first thing that we do is to actually get the list of the games that doesn't have any second player. If we can find a game like this, what we do is to get that game and update the second player with our own user ID. Afterwards, we wait for questions to be generated. We didn't do that yet, so you can keep calm. You will do it in a second. Also, we are listing the changes on the current question number as well. So this way, both players can get notified when there's a change on it. In here, we mock the question generation. We update the properties of the game object to say that, hey, the questions are ready. So you can take it and move forward. If there isn't any game in the queue, we create ourselves. We create a game object with player one and wait for the player two to arrive. 
After we have two players, we generate the questions and we keep listening to the current question property. Now let's see how it looks like when we run the application on two simulators. Once both of the applications are done and ready to be played, you can check out how they look like. First, we will click on the search game button in one of the devices. And we will search for another game in the other device as well. And you can see that immediately there will be a change in both screens. And now you can see that both screens has the same question. I will just play it randomly now and we will see who wins at the end. You can see that we have the winner and also how many points that they get out of it. Now the gaming logic in place. Let's implement the question generation with generative AI. For this, we will be using the resource.ts file from our data, and we will use a new capability of Amplify so we can generate questions out of it. First, we will update the resource.ts file like the following. Once you do the update and save your file, you can see that Sandbox is already generating the resources for you. In the meantime, it does that, Let's take a look at the changes that we did. Like the model classes that we create, we have a new keyword here. It's called generation. With the new AI capabilities, you can generate out of a prompt. Generation keyword will be used for single operations. However, if you want to keep track of the history, like creating a chat application, instead of generation, you should be using the conversation keyword. You will define your model here. But before you use the model, be sure that you have access to it over your console. You can define your prompt and pass it here. Be sure to check out all the resources that we have for you to create proper prompts for your applications. You can pass in arguments. You can also check out the tools so you can make a call to other resources. You can also define the return objects and it will automatically do the deserialization for you. For each model or for each generation or many capabilities, you can create your own authorization rules. For example, in here, it defined that this operation can be done by only authenticated users. Once the deployment is successful again, now you can create the front-end part to actually generate the questions. The generate client function has a really big importance here. It will generate a client object that is aware of your schema. This way, you can easily access the models or the generations in this case. Let's remove the Malkin logic and update it with the following. First, we call the generate questions function from the generations. Next, with the result, we check if there's any errors. If not, we check the data and return the type of the data through the question custom type that we created. And set the question data according to the generated questions that we have. And that's it. Now you can generate questions out of the system prompt that we provided. So let's run our applications again on both simulators. First, let's search for a game. Now the question generation is happening. Once it is done, we can see both on the screen. You can see that the questions are different than we had before. Let's try to answer those and see who wins. You can see that the first player won with the majority of the points because I only answered with that. However, you can see the real-time aspect of the questions are already working. Now the question generation is done. However, the app really doesn't look very nice. Next thing, which is a bonus point, we will use Amazon Q Developer to update our UI component and make it look nicer. Select on screen component and styles object. The Amazon Q Developer will make updates out of it. Click on command I to give some instructions to it. In here, I mentioned updating the UI because it's ugly and using the color orange for anything that comes to mind. Around the prompt now, you can see that Amazon Q Developer is going through all of my code and only making changes if it is necessary. It is going through each step, updating everything necessary. If it's not UI related, it is just leaving as it is. And you can see the change depth along the way as well. So you will see a lot of errors along the way. Don't worry about it. Once it is done, it will give you a chance to accept each or accept everything. 
it is still doing these changes. You can see there are changes on the elevations and so on. And now it is done. So I go up. We can see on the top if I can accept or reject. I will accept it. Once I accept it, as you see, I have zero errors. I save the file. And now the UI looks completely different. But let's restart and see how everything looks like. Let me search the game now. The text, the colors are a bit different than before. The questions are generated. But as you see, the sign out button is the same because we made the update to the home screen, not the app. And now the question generation is done and our quiz is ready. Congratulations, you built your application successfully. If you want to learn more about this, you can check out the source code over GitHub. You can check out the detailed blog post over community.aws. And if you want to learn more about the Amplify Gen 2, you can check out the documentation. On the documentation, you will find the quick start guides for the platform of your choosing. And if you enjoyed this and want to see more hands-on technical content, like this video and subscribe to the AWS Developer YouTube channel. Bye.